Hello friends! So, it is no secret by now that I am a Harry Styles stan. And proud! I'm also an English literature graduate, so I was very intrigued when I saw this photo of Harry Styles holding The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Now the reason I was so intrigued is because this is a notoriously complex poem. It is densely packed with allusions to Shakespeare, Greek mythology, the Western literary canon, Hinduism, Buddhism... Basically, you need to have read an awful lot to even understand what the hell is going on. It changes who the speaker is, what location they're in, what time it is, constantly, and also really abruptly. So, to cut a long story short, this is a difficult poem. And so when I saw this photo of Harry Styles holding it, I was impressed. I was like, is there anything this man can't do? So I did some digging and it turns out this book was given to him at an album listening party by a fan because of his love for poetry. And this got me thinking, which is dangerous with my tiny little brain. I wanted to know which poetry Harry Styles had read and enjoyed and recommended and how it had influenced his music and his style. And um, spoiler alert, it's a lot. And so because I graduated in 2020 during a pandemic, I didn't have a job. Yeah! I'm gonna add in a fun sound effects, make that not sound depressing. And so basically, I dedicated the last month of my life, yes, month, analysing, reading, dissecting all of the poetry that Harry Styles has been influenced by, from Shakespeare to Bukowski and Brautigan. And honestly, time well spent in my opinion. So, for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you everything that I've found, and hopefully it will help you to understand Harry Styles a little bit better. On tonight's programme, ladies and gentlemen, we have something that's gonna make you sick. Okay, let's start by talking about Rumi. So, Harry Styles, actually, should we call him Harry? Listen, we're all friends here, let's just refer to him as if we're on a first name basis. Anyway, our pal Harry basically did an interview with another man where he spoke about all of the things that he couldn't live without. One of the things he listed was this collection of books. So we've got Love is a Dog from Hell, The Essential Rumi, and Siddhartha. For now we're going to be focusing on the middle one, which is Rumi's poetry, which I will add Harry Styles has also been spotted carrying around with him on tour. So Rumi was a Persian 13th century poet. He wrote about Islamic mysticism, spirituality, nature, the seasons, there's lots of of religious imagery, and this is definitely something that Harry Styles has expressed an interest in. You can tell from his tattoos. He has the Bible tattooed on him, he also has a cross, you know, just bits of religious symbolism. And actually Siddhartha by Herman Hesse, which is the third book that he recommended, is all about spirituality, finding spiritualism from within, that kind of thing. But I'm going to be talking about Siddhartha as well as all of the other novels that Harry Styles has recommended in a separate video which will come out next week because I read all of those as well, and let me just tell you, his taste? Immaculate. My compliments to the chef. Back in this interview with another man, Harry said, I feel like people who say I'm spiritual sound a little wanky. But yeah, I definitely consider myself to be more spiritual than religious. I'm not super tied into certain rules, but I think it's naive to say nothing exists and there's nothing above us or more powerful than us. And then he goes on to speak about his belief in karma. But perhaps the most important message from Rumi's collection of poetry is kindness. For example, in the poem New Blossoms, there's a stanza that goes, Go toward kindness. If you are not sure where that is, you will be drawn in by fakes. And then, in a poem called Any Sprig of a Herb, the poem opens by saying, Learned theologians do not teach love. Love is nothing but gladness and kindness. But I think Rumi's attitude to kindness is best captured by this line that I found, and it goes, Your acts of kindness are iridescent wings of divine love which linger and continue to uplift others long after your sharing." And of course, the main message Harry Styles has been sharing for years is treat people with kindness. I mean, it's in his album promo, it's on t-shirts, it's on mugs, it's in his tweets, it's even in his songs. I reckon if Harry Styles could wear a big neon sign above his head that said, treat people with kindness, then he would. And so it's not surprising to me at all that Harry loves this poetry. And the last thing I'll say about Rumi is that his poetry features a lot of imagery and symbolism of the natural world. I mean, I just need to read you some of the titles of his poems for you to get that idea. So there's Leaves About to Let Go, Inhale Autumn, Long for Spring, A Mixed Breed Apple, Miles of Riverside Cane Bed. Basically, he loves nature. And in a way, this is sort of something Harry Styles does too, particularly with the motif of fruit. We have kiwi, we have watermelon sugar, we have references to strawberries and lemon. We also have cherry, although I do think cherry is a very, very clever song title because cherry sounds like sherry, which sounds like mon chéri, which is the French for darling, beloved, sweetheart. And it's written about his love for a French woman, Camille Rowe. His mind! Okay, next let's talk about the big one. Charles Bukowski. Harry has recommended Bukowski's poetry in so many interviews, like, he recommends Bukowski a lot. He's also been spotted reading this poetry in public a lot of times, from You Get So Alone at Times That It Just Makes Sense, to Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame. Oh, and this tweet, The People Look Like Flowers at Last, that is actually the name of a Bukowski poem and collection, not just something Harry tweeted when he was watermelon sugar 
Hi, and let me just tell you, the influence of Bukowski on Harry Styles is not just limited to his Twitter account, it's also in so many of his songs and his lyrics and his albums, and I'm gonna tell you where. Now Bukowski is a pretty filthy poet, if I'm honest. He was a self-confessed, dirty old man. He's raw, he's candid, he's honest. He does not mask his thoughts through metaphors, similes, analogies. No, it is a very real, lived, authentic experience, translated it through language, but in exactly the way that the brain thinks of these ideas. And Bukowski explains this in his book Women, where he basically says that instead of going out into the world and looking for poetry, he just comes back to his room after a day of living, existing, and just writes down what he remembers of it and what made an impression on him. And Harry Styles loves this guy. Like, that is the understatement of the whole century. His song From the Dining Table literally reads like a Bukowski poem set to music. So let's talk about the opening lines. They go, Woke up alone in this hotel room, played with myself, where were you? Fell back to sleep, I got drunk by noon. I've never felt less cool. And here I think Harry is definitely emulating Bukowski's style of just writing down exactly how you experience the world. And one of Bukowski's poems actually opens with a line about waking up alone in a cheap room. So very similar kind of opening line there. Especially the second line with the reference to played with myself. This is something that Bukowski is not shy about talking about, but Bukowski basically talks about this as a natural human thing and a human instinct, I guess. And stigmas do not exist in Bukowski's world. And I think that kind of mentality is something that Harry Styles has adopted in his life and in his music in a really, really awesome way. Next, let's talk about this extract from the poem Style. Style is the answer to everything. A fresh way to approach a dull or dangerous thing. To do a dull thing with style is preferable to doing a dangerous thing without it. To do a dangerous thing with style is what I call art. Now the interesting thing about this poem is that Harry actually started his live shows pre-global pandemic with this poem, but he merged it with Golden. You know the bit that goes Da 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 That bit. Also, Harry, if some miracle happens and this video somehow finds its way to you, Yes, I am available to be a backing singer. And I think Harry's style, Harry Styles' style, is definitely daring and bold, and in a way, it's dangerous. And when I say style here, I don't just mean fashion, I also mean his aesthetic in general, his artistry, his genre. Think of Sign of the Times as his debut solo single, for example. Like, that was bold to release something that was so different to his One Direction days as the first song to define his new kind of solo career. Like, that is dangerous. And lyrically, across Harry's discography, we can find so many references to Bukowski's poetry. Some are pretty subtle, for example, in the song She, when he sings, sends his assistant, sends his assistant, God, that's a bit too much sibilance for me, sends his assistant for coffee in the afternoon around 1.32. Now, the specificity of the time 1.32 is so Bukowski. Everything numerical is always very, very specific, whether that's the time, the temperature, a sum of money, anything. And I think that is to increase very similitude. Very similitude basically just means presenting something in the most realistic, true form possible. But then we also have direct references to Bukowski, which are completely undeniable. For example, Harry's song Woman. Now, I think the title is obviously very similar to Bukowski's novel Women. This sounds like a kind of tenuous link until you realize that the lyric, this thing upon me, Howls like a beast, you flower, you feast. It's a Bukowski quote. The original poem by Bukowski, which is called Old Man Dead in a Room, has a lyric that reads, this thing upon me, like a flower and a feast. Now in the poem, this thing upon me isn't death itself, but kind of finality and the clarity one gets when they become aware of their own mortality. And Harry's song Woman is sort of about that same sense of suffering, not because of the end of a life, but because of the end of a relationship. Then just to add another one into the mix, we also have the book Women. And this is about people sort of drifting through relationships and just being pretty cruel to each other, to be honest. And I think that essence is very much captured in the song Woman. Now, don't get me wrong, it's definitely not as simple as just being like, everything is linked to Bukowski, but it does give us some sort of insight into what certain lyrics and what their influences could mean. For example, in Adore You, we have the lyric, I'd walk through fire for you just let me adore you. Which is lovely, but it becomes even more powerful when you realise that Bukowski has a poem and a whole collection called What Matters Most Is How You Walk Through the Fire. And fire is actually a really prevalent motif in Bukowski's poetry. By the way, motif just basically means a recurring sort of image or symbol throughout someone's work. For Bukowski, fire represents a really deep and intense devotion to someone. But also on the flip side, you have the pain that codependence and relying on someone else can bring. And in fact, you may not know this, but Bukowski is actually featured on one of Harry's songs, and that is Only Angel. There's a soundbite at the beginning, which is a sample from Bukowski's 1987 film, Barfly. And I think the reason that's in there is to sort of reinforce the satire and irony of the term angel in the song Only Angel. And that is because in a lot of Bukowski's poetry, angel is used as a derogatory term. 
them. By the way, remember this from earlier in the Another Man interview, Love is a Dog from Hell? Well, there's a poem in here called A Plate Glass Window, which opens with the lines, dogs and angels are not very different. Let's just say that in this collection of poetry, dogs are not cute, fluffy little pets that love you no matter what. Here, the term dog actually usually refers to a dismissive or harsh woman, kind of a femme fatale kind of figure, hence the uh, title, Love is a Dog from Hell. So when Harry says, she's an angel, the Bukowski reference tells us it's definitely meant to be read more in that way. Now, uh, I'm gonna warm up before my final point because this is possibly a bit of a stretch, but in Love is a Dog from Hell, there's basically this poem called Beach Trip. And in Beach Trip, there are these lines that go, I walk off with my woman as the waves go in and out. There's something wrong with them, she said. What is it? Their love only runs in one direction. One Direction! Now listen, at first, I didn't believe either that this could possibly have inspired the name One Direction until I did a little bit of digging. And it turns out that Harry Styles was actually the one who came up with the name One Direction. I'm just putting it out there. It could just be a really cool coincidence or it could be inspired by Bukowski. I don't know. And just to end on Bukowski, Harry has basically described this poetry as so real, gritty and filthy yet there is something so romantic about it all. And now let's move on to something super recent, and that is this Vogue photo shoot. Of course, the cover image is inspiring and empowering and destroying toxic masculinity with a freaking sledgehammer. But the photo I want to speak about today is this one, specifically the trousers that he is wearing. These are from Bode, they are custom made corduroy trousers and they are awesome. Now these trousers have basically been painted and embroidered with a lot of very personal touches. For example, the names of his godchildren, his year of birth, a portrait of David Hockney, who is a big inspiration for Harry, and loads more. But the one thing that caught my eye is the fact that there's a poem stitched into the trousers. That poem is The Weight by Richard Brattigan, and it goes a little something like this. It seemed like years before I picked a bouquet of kisses off her mouth and put them into a dawn-coloured vase in my heart, but the weight was worth it because I was in love. Of course, this is a poem about yearning for love, but also trusting in the process that everything will work out in the end. And the reason that's interesting is because Brautigan also wrote, where is it? Aha, in Watermelon Sugar. This is 100% confirmed to have inspired the song Watermelon Sugar. This book was on the table in the studio when the song was recorded and it was a gift from Camille Rowe, Harry's ex-girlfriend. Now, this is gonna be a bit of a tangent and I don't know if I'm just reading too deeply into things, but I've got very caught up in the Harry Styles cinematic universe, all right? Basically, on this pair of bowed trousers, there is the poem and next to it is a fish. Now, the other novella, which basically just means a short novel that Brautigan is known for is Trout Fishing in America. It's very surrealist, very bizarre, much like this book, and also much like the music video to Adore You, which features a fish! Now, what I think is that the fish, this poem, the references to Brautigan are all nods to Camille Rowe. Brautigan is one of her favourite novelists and she recommended him to Harry Styles, so I rest my case. Let's move on to Shakespeare. Now listen, I know what you're thinking, what the hell does Shakespeare have to do with Harry Edward Styles? Well, my friends, I'll tell you. The title of the song Sweet Creature is an allusion to Shakespeare's Othello. And this has been said to Harry Styles in person to his actual face. And granted, when the host said to him, this song was inspired by a Shakespeare line, he didn't go, oh yeah, Shakespeare, I love that dude. But he also didn't deny it or look confused in the slightest. So I think that's pretty much confirmation, right? So in this scene, Iago says, I lay with Cassio lately. In sleep, I heard him say, sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. And then, sir, would he grip and wring my hand, cry, oh, sweet creature, then kiss me hard. As if he plucks up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips, then laid his leg over my thigh and sighed and kissed and then cried, cursed fate that gave thee to the moor. So if you understandably have no clue what's going on there, let me just translate that for you. So basically these lines from Acts 3, Scene 3 of Othello are shocking because Iago is basically telling Othello that another man is professing love for his wife in his sleep while sleeping next to Iago in the army barracks. And it's also shocking on a second level because he's essentially kind of straddling Iago, another man, uh, in his sleep. However, this did not actually happen. Iago is basically making the whole thing up. And so many people have perceived this as a kind of homoerotic fantasy on Iago's part. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now, the reason I'm including lines from a play in a video about poetry is because this line is written in verse, not prose. And basically the word verse just means that there's rhythm to the lines. In this case, it's called iambic pentameter and I am is basically where it goes de dum. So it's an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. So de dum. And then every line has five I am. So de dum, de dum, de dum, de dum, de dum. So that makes it an iambic pentameter. So for example, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. Do you see? Now the reason I'm telling you all this and the reason that this is so interesting is because the line, cry oh sweet creature, then kiss me hard, 
is an incomplete iambic pentameter. There's only nine syllables instead of ten. Cry oh, sweet creature, then kiss me hard. Do you see? There's like not enough syllables. And in the context of this play, that makes this line shocking because it's uncomfortable, it doesn't sound quite right. And that is to reinforce this sense of unnaturalness, of infidelity, of cuckoldry, of having an affair with someone else's wife. And then it's also shocking because of the homoeroticism where he says kiss me hard, but he's actually kissing a man in his sleep. Anyway, I mean, in my research that I've done, I've read some hot takes, let me tell you, on the link between Othello and the song Sweet Creature by Harry Styles, who this video is actually about. And I have to say, I'm not entirely convinced by them, especially because I think that Sweet Creature, to me, sounds like a song that's not romantic. It seems to me like a very platonic relationship. And I would guess it's probably about family based on the lyric, two hearts in one home. I think that sort of suggests like his mom or his sister or someone like that. So I don't know. I don't think it's worth reading too deeply into this particular title and where it sits in the play, especially because a lot of phrases, idioms, and sayings that we have today are actually originated from Shakespeare. For example, green eyed monster, break the ice, wearing your heart on your sleeve, um, method to the madness, vanishing into thin air, and so, so many more. A lot of things that we have in our language today come from Shakespeare. However, having said that, I think the one thing you could make quite a strong case for is the fact that Othello is ostensibly a play about miscommunication, about misunderstanding, and it's ultimately this miscommunication that causes tragedy. And miscommunication is definitely one of the biggest themes on Harry Styles' first album. So think about the lyric, we don't talk enough, in Sign of the Times, or we don't talk about it, it's something we don't do, in Meet Me in the Hallway, in From the Dining Table we have Why Won't You Ever Say What You Want to Say, and then of course in Sweet Creature we have I always think about you and how we don't talk enough. So the title Sweet Creature could be a reference to a play all about that miscommunication. But while we're on the topic of Sweet Creature, there is one other really, really clear reference and that is to Fleetwood Mac. Trust me, listen to the way that Harry sings the word sweet right at the beginning of the song and then listen to Fleetwood Mac's song You Make Loving Fun. That song also begins with the word sweet but in the exact same way. I mean, I would try and sing a rendition now but I think it would just sound so much like Harry Styles that I'd get automatically demonetized in copyright claims, so we're not gonna do that. Also, I may or may not be tone deaf, but you can go away and check that out for yourself. There is no doubt in my mind that Harry is referencing Fleetwood Mac, who he is known to be a massive, massive fan of at the beginning of this song. And you will be pleased to know that the last poet I'm going to be speaking about today is Walt Whitman. Now, in Harry's cover story interview for Beauty Papers, he speaks about loads of different people who have inspired him, and one of those people is Walt Whitman. And though I couldn't find a link to a specific poem, what's interesting about Walt Whitman is that basically he wanted to create a new style of poetry. So he was very aware of like European poetry, European traditions, the European canon. But what Walt Whitman wanted to do was basically introduce a new style of specifically and uniquely American poetry. Poetry. So while he acknowledges that, yeah, everything you guys are doing over in Europe, that's great, I, I appreciate it, that's cool for you. He also wanted America to have its own distinctive identity when it came to poetry, and I think that, in a way, that sort of reminds me of how Harry Styles views his music and his style, because he definitely takes inspiration from other people. I mean, Sign of the Times definitely has um, inspiration from Prince. Two Ghosts has lyrical similarities with a Pink Floyd song called Wish You Were Here. And so drawing a link between himself and Walt Whitman makes a lot of sense to me. I, I, I get the link. And with that... <sighs> We're done. Honestly, well done you for getting to this point in the video. I hope that this all made sense and it wasn't just my brain going a bit crazy in lockdown. But I really enjoyed reading all of this poetry that has influenced the music of Harry Styles and I'm so excited to share my video on the books that have inspired him too. Let's continue this conversation in the comments section down below. You can give this video a like if you liked it. If you like, I worked for a whole month on it so I would really, really appreciate it if you would. You can subscribe for more from me, including next week's video on Harry Styles. Also, my Instagram is right here. You can check that out if you want as well. And my Goodreads account will be linked down below in the description box where I track every book that I read. So thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it interesting. I've been Jack Edwards. I wish I was Harry Styles, but I'm, I'm not, unfortunately. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.